Hello, everyone, and uh, uh, it is my great pleasure to have this opportunity to share with some of my work probably in the last 10 years. Uh, as Hiram said, I, um, my background is on certification or has been on certification, uh, but with a, its application in the casting, wedding, and additive manufacturing. Right. Uh, um, Today, probably just focus on a uh, uh, wedding, a uh, wedding of steers. And then, so I think we, I'm talking to the audience from WMG Steer Group. I think they're probably the largest group in the country. So uh, uh, I will start with probably kind of flow, fluid flow, and then followed by second part will be on solidification uh, uh, in the med pool during arc wedding of a steer, right? A majority of work actually came from a European project, uh, something called Minderwet. Sounds like chocolate name, but it's a, a consortium we made up of different you know, seven different groups and look into uh, multi scale multi physical modeling of welding, right? So I li really need to acknowledge the Minderweld project. So Karen told me you have very probably a little bit quite diverse background. I gave you use two slides to introduce the welding. So welding is important, it's an important manufacturing route. And if you look around, uh, about 50% of global domestic or your engineering products contain uh, wet joints. So it uh, also supports a diverse sector of companies according to very different sectors. Look into the picture showing uh, automotive and then look into and uh, pipeline or gas and oil platforms and shipbuilding and construction aerospace defense. So wedding has been uh, actually quite dynamic topic in this kind of metal processing area. So what this looks like, a welding is a it's his permanent metallic joint. You have two uh, pieces of ma metals that can be the same and or can be different. If the same, we call it similar welding. If it's different, it's called, it's called uh, this is similar welding, right? After you uh, met those uh, uh, we said joints, and then you will have solidification will form kind of a, a permanent metallic joints. So that's called a, a, a wedding process. And then it's by forming these permanent joints between these two parts. So what really happens? Uh, for example, if we look at it's one of the most popular wedding method, we call arc wedding, right? So you have two different, we call work piece A and B in the bottom. Now we put them together and we want to form a permanent joint between those two parts. And then you will uh, have kind of something like called arc gang, or can be laser gun as well, but if, we, if it's arc gun, the arc gun will act as a cathode uh, uh, over there. And then we, this metal piece uh, will be a lot over there. So when those two getting close enough and you form an kind of arc, and this is called uh, arc will form in this area. Normally, it's, uh, uh, it's plasma gas area over there. It can be very hot. The temperature can easily get to 2000, uh, over 2000, 2600 degrees C, right? So what will happen then you met those uh, filler materials in this area, and then we'll be completely mixed. And we'll look into how fast it is in this wet pool. We call it internal flow inside a wet pool. And then we're followed by solidification. And the solidification look into, you always grow from this kind of solid liquid interface, uh, grows towards this center of the wet joints. So this we say to us, we say, welding has these three phenomena: melting, uh, melting, mixing, and uh, solidify, right? So we we develop kind of modeling framework. We say this word is kind of multiple physics and uh, multiple scale phenomena. So if you look uh, into even more detail, look into processing, look into chemistry and the structure correlation in welding. So we build this kind of a, a, we call a frame, framework of more modeling activities for welding. So on the top one, we mainly address chemistry issue, right? And in the bottom side, we're looking processing wise, uh, looking to you know heat, thermal flow, and stress issues. 
On the right hand side, this would be wicked performance, looking to structure integrity and the cracking and looking to hot cracking or cold cracking. And cold cracking normally when mentioned to the hydrogen uh, embrittlement. So uh, I think the most important thing we did uh, in this in this work, we said we said established uh, data flow and at different scales of modeling, right? Uh, if we start from chemistry, chemistry side, uh, looking to red one to sm very small scale, quantum scale, uh, uh, the tools will be, models will be ab initio and quantum mechanic. At this scale, probably you, you will get kind of a, a thermodynamic data. This is really thermodynamic, looking to electron interactions and it's at atomic scale thermodynamics. And also you can probably be able to solve the force field between different atoms. Uh, when we try to uh, to do this kind of interaction between hydrogen and alloy, uh, we tried, but we didn't get anything out of it. Yeah, but this is still quite hot area. Looking to hydrogen embrittlement in in matters, we're still are continuing our effort. Uh, but there are many unknown things in there. Mm. But from there, you also can look at the interface properties and interatomic potentials. And those, if in particular, those interatomic potentials will be required by this kind of a large scale, looking to uh, millions of atoms, we could at a molecular dynamic scale, right? So from this scale, and then you look into probably at uh, uh, millions of atoms, and then you can look into hydrogen diffusion, and then, or you can look to cohesive uh, zone models and correlate this into mechanic performance as well, right? So if we move down to a little bit larger scale, we say you got millions of atoms, then you can move on to the micro scale, scale level, look into, uh, uh, for example, you can use phase field modeling or phase field crystal modeling. But this MD model will be able to give you uh, data. We say those are data are leaded between those two labeling uh, models, looking to interface structures, uh, looking to thermodynamic property of solid, liquid, or solid, solid interfaces. And then those also, the signal will flow backwards as well. From first field, probably you'll be able to provide a chemical. Can you hear me now? Right, I see a, a, a signal come up. Right. So, uh, so if I look uh, further down, look into a uh, process inside. Uh, somehow uh, we can't hear you. Uh, that you're you're in the mute. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. someone has been keep on um, muting me. I'm not sure what happened to it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, mm. I, can, I can hear. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. So uh, if we, from the bottom side, are looking to processing wise, looking to heat flow, uh, uh, we can say, look into uh, boundary conditions, solidification fronts, and the much zone probability. And this is normally looking at uh, FE uh, uh, tools to analyze them. And then followed by kind of a uh, grain structure level, we are looking to you know, chromal grain, equax grain, and then you get the duty kinetic solidification interface and the microscopic properties over there, right? So those I say, we said that welding is kind of a, a multi-phase, multi-scale uh, 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 phenomena, but uh, we probably be just able to flow the data between those different labeling, uh, uh, labeling scales, right? And in the end, and all this kind of chemistry from top processing from uh, the, uh, the bottom, we uh, have a inference on this microstructure, uh, like in the mic mic micro scale phases, also micro scale defects, right? So you can get a microstructure chemistry, some dynamics, look into also fractures or defect growth and residual stress those sort of level. And this will be linked with kind of a smaller scale kind of diffusion of hydrogen and cohesive zone model to uh, give information for, for you to predict, predict mechanical performance such as structure integrity or hot cracking or cold crackings. So this is overall structure and it's four years work. And today probably our focus on two things. The focus first on we look, try to look into flow. Uh, in, 
uh, or identify internal flow within the arc welding uh, and then look into solidification those two uh, phenomena. So first part will be uh, fluid flow in, in the metal pool, right? Um, first, we look at the forces acting on the wet pool during welding or during arc welding. So uh, you will look into uh, uh, analyze those actual forces on it. Uh, we will look into first one with Maragori force, essentially the surface uh, force. And then we'll look into a little bit more detail and why it's important. And then second force, you have arc drag force, which is on, from acting on the surface as well. And this is normally uh, 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 arc pulling uh, force, actually a uh, track force. Yeah. And then you will have a buoyant force and a Lorentz force. Buoyant force is density, density difference, and Lorentz force because electromagnetic effect, right? But those forces have different kind of uh, uh, functions. Uh, some of them uh, will be able to we can widen the pool, and some of them will deepening the pool. But this is important because this will affect the welding performance. And also, this, if you look now, now that we look into additive ma manufacturing uh, using an uh, arc wire method, and then this also affects the formability. Actually, you want to control uh, the, the, the morphology of bead. Uh, you have ways by controlling those different forces. For, for example, we will give you an uh, example later on look into this Maragori force change, surface force change, and can we modify surface and to uh, and to modify uh, 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 the morphology of, of the weld bead and also look into formability of the additive manufacturing using arc weld method. So if we are close them, you say those forces, when the Maragori force, when your surface tension against temperature change is less than is elective, so you will have kind of widen force. And the arc drag force always is actually to pull the uh, where uh, uh, your uh, pull uh, widen it. And then similar to the buoyant force, this is the force acting internally or either on the surface or internally in the metal pool. Uh, depending on the uh, uh, pool, look into many Raragori force when you got surface tension increase as temperature increases, or Lorentz force again, it's uh, try to deepen the pool, right? So now look into kind of kind of we say importance of these different forces. Uh, generally speaking, we do not have enough, we do not have accurate data. Uh, we try to measure it, it has been very difficult. Those are the probably uh, are the rule of thumb. Look into so. Uh, we look probably look, look into first from Mar Maragori force, and then you look into probably 10 minus four ish, and then a uh, similar level to arc drag force. And Lorentz force is one magnitude lower, buoyant force is even lower, depending on, anyway, this is depending on materials. As uh, a rule of thumb, you probably have this kind of uh, ratio of power or ratio of the force acting on uh, your weather pool. Uh, arc drag force probably in the same order uh, of. Uh, Marangori force, and then Lorentz force is one magnitude less, and buoyant force is probably two magnitude less. Right. So those are the four main forces acting on on, on the weld pool, and then uh, so how to characterize them, right? Uh, if you look probably ten years ago, we normally look at ex situ method, and uh, you can examine this kind of metagraphic of so. We, as other solidified methods, try to trace out, but this is the indirect method. And then uh, at early days, and then use a laser beam, a laser beam to look at surface the phenomena. But the, and then you will not, not be able to see the internal flow. But internal flow can be different, very different with the surface flows, right? And then people try to use organic materials, but organic materials, and then you are limited to the analog systems, right? Uh, uh, since X-ray uh, has come in probably since the 1970s, and the people start to use X-ray uh, to look into uh, 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 internal or look through uh, liquid matter, and they try to figure out uh, 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 what happened uh, during welding. Right? Uh, this we said uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, spectrum, and X-ray gave us opportunity actually to, you can see through the matters. Uh, to a certain length of, of your material. Mm. So we, to observe kind of kinetic or this kind of very dynamic process, 
uh, transmission method, uh, image method is one of the popular method. And uh, generally speaking, it's uh, it's X-ray or attenuation, and when X-ray tra trans through the, your material, right? And then uh, 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 we said transmission will be lost when X-ray penetrating through your know, either steel or liquid solid steel or other matters, right? And then we have something called attenuation in X-ray. But generally speaking, and this will depend on uh, your output and the input correlation. And then this will depend on your materials. So we'll depend on what kind of materials it is. And then uh, a density of materials is also another, another concern. And then grazing angles. And normally it is where or how the X-ray acting on, all, on your uh, sample, right? So by considering this into, into account, and then you probably can choose what kind of X-ray you can use. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to do any uh, 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 steer study, and this is a, a figure probably you have you, you have come across before, and then you will you will see enough difference and give you enough attenuation lens, uh, looking to 10 millimeters, and then you really need to get this kind of energy level. But again, which energy we use and depends on what what purpose you want to see it. Right. So after you after you probably uh, uh, have done this kind of basic kind of calculation, and then you should really talk to a beam line scientist and uh, to look at what kind of image method you want to use. Uh, you have you have radiography, it's essentially transmission, and tomography or topographic. Those techniques you want to use, and then probably if you look at this uh, synchrotron X-ray uh, radiography. And then essentially, it's transmission image. It's 2D, it's direct. And now they can get spatial resolution. Now they can get micrometers uh, if you push to the limit. And then the time res temporal resolution can be in a, a 0.1 or even 0.1 milliseconds, right? Because we have uh, very, very fast for detecting a system which can accommodate the higher spatial resolution, right? And they have good side dynamic absorption and also got uh, uh, refraction constants you need to consider. You can look into or you can examine with a solid liquid interface and you can look solid boundaries, probably just be able to see it. And then you will be able to uh, uh, hydrodynamics uh, in this uh, liquid. Mm -hmm. uh, there are may, probably many groups now in the world uh, that using this method to look to look look into it. And nowadays, uh, the probably you have also can have probably look into arch fast uh, methods. And then essentially uh, uh, you will get probably much finer uh, 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 kinetics uh, because you can do the faster uh, sampling rate. And you can look into this from the hot tearing, porosity formation, even precipitates can be started as using this fast react. Uh, for, uh, ultra fast synchrotron X ray tomography. So, in our experiments, and we we, we did this kind of a uh, uh, design, it says it's quite simple. And then, <coughs> so this is our arc gun, right? Uh, and then we got beam uh, source comes through this way, and this is detector, essentially transmission detector. And uh, we we try to cool down sort of copper block, and when in, at the initial design we want to actually rotate the sample, but in the end we gave up because of uh, the dynamic where where uh, in the whirlpool is much faster than the rotating speed you can achieve. Right. So this is what it looks like. This our sample is sitting in there, and this X-ray pass over there, and then this is surrounding area. Make sure this. A uh, 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 liquid will not be a uh, uh, splash out, right? And uh, we tried per 100 keV as I showed earlier. Uh, we we want to see probably as many as uh, photos as possible. We use a white beam model, and then uh, probably at that time uh, it, we got certain uh, kind of a micrometers pixel resolution that we can get, and we can get 1,000 frames per second as captured. We did also try 2,000 seconds as well. Right? Um, in this in these uh, experiments, and then we also use particles, use particles to trace the internal flow. The particles we choose, we use tungsten and tantalum particle we added to, but in the end we, we, we select tungsten. 
uh, tungsten can stay longer time uh, in the wet pool compared with uh, tantalum. Right? So this is a bit of a kind of convention, the welding parameters you want to use. Uh, 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 and then this is a, 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 a bit of summary. We use tungsten particle and we use high beam energy and high frame rate uh, in this radiographic imaging. Uh, we tried this kind of a C comms kind of a detect camera and mainly want to gain a spatial resolution and also temporal resolution as well. Right. Uh, yeah, imaging processing is another way. Uh, after doing experiment, any process image is important. Uh, first one, we said we should differentiate image method, and we run experiment without welding and, and with welding, and then it takes a, 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 a differential signal from each other, and then which will give you this phenomenon which happens uh, inside the area you are interested in. You are interested in. For example, when you see, want to see the signal within uh, the mad pool. Right? So this is uh, uh, probably a little bit math uh, mathematics to tell you, and this again, it depends. Uh, if you have particles into, into your wet pool, and those particles, and uh, we are probably absorb more, a little bit more kind of uh, X-ray. So this gave us uh, a signal and to uh, 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 trace the uh, uh, internal flow streams. So this is our experiments, and this is what looks like. Uh, I think this uh, uh, the overall the lens is about ten uh, uh, millimeters. Uh, this uh, uh, this view window is about ten millimeters. So ten millimeters. Now you should be able to see uh, uh, the arc gun uh, in the top, and then you have this kind of we call it free surface uh, of the liquid matter moving up and down. Uh, after the melting the pool, this will be made pool, you'll see this uh, black particles inside. These black particles are tungsten particles. Uh, because tungsten particles absorb a little bit more uh, X-ray, so you will see it a bit dark-ish. So this is the raw image. After this, after we get this raw image, and then we use uh, uh, image process method to trace the individual particles over each frame, right? And those Actually, the tracing took us probably half a year, more than half a year, to figure out and how to this tracing individual particles inside of, inside of the pool, and then work out uh, uh, the average speed or, 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 or the maximum speed of this kind of internal flow streams. Now, this is the way we now we, we want to trace in the particles. So we've got tungsten, uh, it should be tungsten uh, particles in there, inside the liquid pool, and then, and we're not tracing the paths, individ individual paths. By doing this, and we'll be able to see the individual uh, flow stream um, uh, uh, inside the well pool. Probably you may argue, and this uh, is a 2D projection of 3D phenomena. Um, we tried very hard, actually. Uh, tried to get 3D. We tried to use the better 2D image to walk backwards into 3D. Uh, it, I think it has been proved impossible. Uh, in the future, I think uh, we should want to really want to want to use essentially use two synchrotron X ray beam, two detectors, and then you look, uh, view this uh, phenomena from different angle. And then with those two kind of uh, new setup, you'll be able to construct into 3D. But here we only got 2D uh, imaging. But uh, we say probably this will be okay if you if we analyze 10 or 20 of them, and then you will probably have a chance to look into uh, uh, the uh, uh, stream path probably just uh, in the right at the right angle of your of, of the screen. So this at least the maximum speed we get it should be the uh, right ones, right? So we said now when we have a chance to look into internal flow. So what do we want to really want to study into it? And then we said probably look into uh, one phenomenon. We want to see uh, the internal flow stream, what it looks like. And then we also get the average speed and also ma maximum speed of the internal stream. This is important. And then uh, we still think we are the first group actually to did this uh, 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 measurement for uh, for the where the arc where the steer, right. so those will be available to do any to validate your modeling, 
and then probably all help you to design uh, 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 the welding process, right? So now, uh, in the uh, next few slides, I will look into how this kind of a surface tension change and can modify uh, the internal flow and then modify the morphology of the wet pool shape. Uh, example, we said, you know, this is previous study say a uh, sapphire can be uh, act, uh, can act as a, a surface active agent to reduce the surface tensions. And then you can see the, uh, 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 when you got low sapphire and you got higher space, uh, space tension, you got more quite shallow pools. When you introduce probably uh, this kind of sapphire surface actant agent, and then you can deepen uh, the pool and modify the morphology of the wet pool significantly. Right. Now we look into two kind of level of sapphires in our study. Uh, stuff with left hand side is a lower one, and the right hand side is higher concentration. Uh, it's very high this way anyway, but uh, we, we want to see this actually effect. Uh, but this transition point should be very low between those two, but we choose those two probably. This is quite arbitrary level of sapphire, but we, we want to uh, demonstrate uh, the effect of a surface tension change on the wet pool. So those are, if you look at this uh, uh, time resolving image, you look into five millisecond, 500 milliseconds, and then to 100, 1000 milliseconds, to 2000 milliseconds, analyze uh, the shape, look, mainly look into widths and the depths uh, at different times to see this uh, morphology evolution. And also you will see this average speed of these uh, particles. Uh, and then look, average one would be 0.08, the maximum one would be 0.31 meters per, uh, per second. The average one has a, sometimes it's probably it's not, has, has not very uh, accurate because 2D projection of 3D phenomena. The maximum speed uh, we are quite confident should be uh, a, a quite accurate uh, estimation, right? And then you can see and how this morphology changes from this kind of wide, shallow one uh, into this kind of deep uh, uh, pools. And this uh, probably would be a direct evidence to see how the internal flow uh, to modify uh, morphology of the pool. And also, this will say a uh, speed, maximum speed is about 0.5 meters per second. This is very significant. If you look at your pool size, normally, uh, for say the pools are from there to there, is about 10 uh, uh, millimeters in diameter. So 10 millimeter diameter in this very small, tiny pool, and you got flow inside, which flows at 0.5 meters per second. So roughly, if you look into it, so how many revolutions will you have per second? So look into, probably look into uh, if diameter times pi, and uh, that would be, uh, if diameter is 10, min 10 uh, uh, millimeters times 3.4, that would be 30-ish, and divide by this 0.5 meters per second. So roughly probably 50-ish kind of full rotation inside, so you those kind of flow rotates very fast. So, and then when we design experiments, the rotating does not have any effect because your dynamics is much faster than this actually uh, 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 a sample you can rotate at. So probably this is a quick summary of this fluid flow in welding. We said where the fluid flow in the steel now has been observed in situ. Uh, when we did experiment, we were the first group did that. Actually, yeah. And then flow velocity uh, uh, can be, uh, has been characterized at speeds of up to 0.52 millimeters per second. It's very dynamic formula in the wet pool. Uh, and then surface active agents, sapphire has an important role uh, in creating welding geometry. And also if you look at additive manufacturing wise, if you look arc welding, arc wire additive manufacturing, and you should really think of design uh, some surface active agents to modify the geometry and it to significantly, significantly affect the formability of your additive manufacturing route. Mm. We said high sulfur content, reduce surface tension and push warm molten matter to the bottom of the uh, wet, therefore increase the depth 
or increase the penetration, and you have much deeper wet pool or wet uh, bead. And the low sapphire ones and many uh, increase surface tension and then pull the war, uh, warm liquid matter to the edges of the wet pool and result in a wide and shallow wedding uh, bead wedding uh, pools. So now we we'll move on to the second part of my talk, looking to solidification. Now we got uh, liquid metal and it has been fully mixed, and solidification will cool down. Fully solidification will occur. Uh, <coughs> today I will talk solidification more a lot of solid state transformation, but looking at how liquid transform to solid, right? Uh, this will be, we say, looking at the grain structure level, and uh, normally we we'll look at the very fine grains around the interfaces, right? And then around this interface, or either, and in the center one, uh, uh, and then you will have some kilometer equal grain will grow. And normally in the center one, you have some equal x grains to, 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 to form. So today I probably want to do some fundamental studies looking to how this grain structure changes you now from this kind of very small gra fine grains to kilometer grains and then to equal x grains, right? So something called equal chromatic to equal x, equal x transition. This will only happen in welding or also happen in casting. And uh, in most certification condition, you have a chromatic chromatic grains and uh, normally elongated longer ones or equal x one, equal round shape and grains. So how this transition? Occur, this has been topic for a long time in solidification study. Uh, so we, we try to gain a deep, deep, deeper by doing probably we call a structure, a solute driven and certificate modeling uh, to look into how this kind of a grain st structure can be changed or you can control a grain structure uh, to either columnar or either equal x grains. Mm. This probably it's a, we say it's a, 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 a way established theory looking into effect. Uh, velocity on this scale, and then uh, thermal grade on the horizontal axis. So this we call it with a CET, CET map. If you processing condition uh, in this kind of area, and you grow uh, equal x grain, and if you at this kind of level, many essentially you are either high, so high thermal gradient, uh, low uh, growing velocity, you form this chromal grains. So this is the earlier. Uh, kind of uh, uh, studies using analytical way to analyze them. And today I will show you uh, using a computer simulation method and uh, to uh, uh, simulate uh, this kind of transition from chromala to equax transitions. Yeah, we use something called a solute blocking approach. Many, uh, this will be a dendrite solid phase and this will be liquid phase. For example, we draw dendrites from right a uh, left hand side to, to the right hand side and then see at the solidification interface and uh, because most alloys and have alloy com uh, components and normally we use a uh, partition coefficient less than one for example aluminum copper leak uh, aluminum iron carbon systems and they all have alloy elements which have partition coefficient less than one so you got kind of enriched kind of la layer of, of of solid elements and how this actually can affect uh, solidification morphologies, right? So we use this kind of solute broken approach and then uh, now look at, uh, uh, we said, uh, equilibrium condition at solidification interface. And this is a schematic diagram of binary phase for partition coefficient element, for, for element with partition coefficient less than one. Uh, this applies to aluminum copper, leak aluminum, iron carbon systems, right? Now we can, you, you, for example, and you have uh, this, this is called liquid slime and this is called solid slime. You cool down from liquid to solid. And then can we control, uh, how can we control the morphology uh, uh, of the solidified structures, right? Mm. So uh, uh, I think in most modeling, as in nowadays, uh, whatever tool you use, and we probably assume a local equilibrium at certification interface means at the certification interface and then your uh, chemistry of solid phase which is uh, we'll call it, uh, would be uh, at the end of tie lines here and the chemistry of liquid phase is determined by thermodynamic uh, uh, equilibrium states and then those are fixed 
right? And then uh, uh, connects may play a role, but kinetics uh, play look into diffusion wise. But for modeling, certification modeling, and we uh, in most modeling case, and we use local equilibrium condition. And also, which means interface temperature is pretty fixed. And look into this interface temperature. Uh, essentially, so we can st start with this one. We start from a T, uh, F uh, or TM should be, and then times the distance of those two essentially is this slope times the concentration difference. And take away those two terms. Then those two terms, the first term is curvature. The curvature always plays a role, and the curvature uh, in, per in particular when lo looking at the costly effect, and it's important. And delta T K is kinetic and the kinetic and the kinetic normally can ignore it. And it's probably one or two magnitude lower than those two. And this also probably is one or two magnitude than this uh, uh, under cooling. So when we grow crystals, for example, we grow a crystal, what will happening? And essentially this will be a control equation. And uh, this is a, we, because you have a solid liquid have different chemistry and you will you grow at this velocity and those are chemistry uh, concentration different. Essentially, those solid atoms will push it, uh, into the liquid uh, from interface. Uh, those those amount of solid element will push it towards uh, into the liquid phase. So and then your liquid phase will, high con will have high concentration, right in there. So because liquid phase uh, is determined at this point, so you have very uh, concentration jump at the interface, and this will decay away, right. And this diffusion normally uh, decay is by diffusion process, and it's either through solid or through liquid phase in there. But in most cases, we probably call the solid diffusion because solid diff diffusion normally ds is about 1,000 times lower than dl. So essentially, this diffusion is liquid control as well. And then you are you, you have this kind of exponential decay of concentration profile. So uh, uh, and then this will give you kind of a melting temperature variation like that. This curve, uh, this we call a local liquid temperature profile. So you, ha you have this one, and then you can apply different thermal gradient. Look at the TG1, TG2. If TG2 condition, and then any materials forms or solidified will be melted. And if TG1 condition, you got this kind of we call it a constitution undercooled area, and this area where you can form new grains. Or uh, if new grain forms and it can grow. So this is a concept called constitution and cooling, and this is a mainly will be uh, uh, the most important concept for this solute dendritic modeling, right? So, uh, so you can apply different thermal gradient, and then to avoid either avoid this kind of chromatic to equation or promote one. For example, in direction certification, if we grow, if we want to grow single crystals, and uh, you normally will use high thermal gradient, low growth velocity, essentially TG2 like that, and you would not allow any grain to form ahead of certification front. Uh, but if you want to promote this one, for example, uh, continuous casting process or even wedding process, you can minimize it, and by uh, uh, introducing uh, this kind of uh, 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 heterogeneous location either by alloy design or you can buy process optimization, right? So that's the theory. And now we we have a, a computer program to uh, simulate the whole process that I explained to you earlier, right? Now we try to do the calculations, right? And we use kind of stochastic uh, modeling method, which probably can use phase field, and we use cafe method uh, to do it. Essentially, we solve we cut a temperature uh, uh, against time and against spatial location with concentration profile, and then those two are, are, are globally solved. And then you will also solve this certification front and essentially to, to determine uh, the certification rate, uh, and then move the interface around. So that's essentially what it's about uh, with a certification theory. So if you look in a little bit more detail of it. And then this will be in the center. This will be growing, growing cells. So those growing cells is controlled by this equation. Essentially, uh, uh, this is diffusion liquid. And then this will be a, a, a solid partitioning at the solid front of it. So this is you apply this game through all computation domain, and that depends on how, if you have large domain, it take a longer time, right? Uh, quickly show this movie. 
And this is a movie we uh, try to use, actually use aluminum copper as an example. Uh, this can be used to interpret other systems. A different color represents different concentration level. The green one looks at the concentration is a lower concentration and the red color represents higher solid concentration. You can see how the concentration evolutes and during the solidification process. And then you will also see kind of a chromatic grain uh, transform to equal X grain. But in this process, we try to mini mimic a welding process and to more uh, to reduce the thermal gradient. When you, you reduce the thermal gradient, you have uh, you essentially you increase the possibility of form new grains ahead of this uh, going front. So you can uh, uh, simulate the chromatic to equal X transitions. So this is a tool uh, we actually, when I work with Peter, we use this code for a very long time. And then uh, it's still available. And uh, if anyone wants to use it, I welcome to to use it, right? Uh, this is supposed to 3D movie, but does not show you on this app PC. Yeah, and then you can do 3D analysis and look into you know, uh, our comparison between 2D and 3D the analysis, essentially look into solid profiles and look into it. So you can have a longitudinal view of what happens inside of the crystals. And then also look into other effects such as undercooling, uh, pooling velocity, essentially uh, thermal gradient velocity. And another thing you look into uh, primary space and essentially is ori our original structure, how the original structure will affect actually the wet cool growth rate. Right. Uh, in the end, you can do the similar things as the analytic modeling doing, and uh, by showing this kind of CET maps of there, and this would be uh, 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 equal x grains, and this would be chromatic grains, and then uh, give you indication if you want where you are uh, in the processing map. Right. So uh, certification structure modeling, where you probably can say uh, uh, those. Uh, uh, Either chroma or equax grain can be simulated, and then uh, to visualize the certification uh, uh, in uh, structure in this during the, uh, during uh, welding, uh, uh, and also we said a complex solute interaction uh, can be observed in the simulation, and which would be quite imp important to look into not only uh, a structure can structure uh, more than looking to now we look into it affect micro segregation, uh, how diffusion will occur, and this all can be investigated. And now we can use this as a tool to examine effect of processing on the grain structure evolution. Right, good, okay, uh, that's all I prepared for you. Uh, now I'm quite happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, please ask the question and switch on the, your camera so he, he knows who's speaking so he can address directly. Anna, please go ahead. I'm just going to turn all my electronics off. On right now. Sorry. Hello, thank you very much. That was a, a great talk. I have one question for you. You talk about the importance of surface tension um, on the weld pool, obviously the depth, the width. Have you looked at the use of different types of flux or is flux something that you covered in your modeling at all? Mm. Uh, this is a very important question and I didn't say it, uh, uh, explain clearly uh, what we did in reality and we used different grade of steers to act on it. But in, uh, in practice, uh, you should really look into a surface, uh, modify the uh, 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 the uh, slack systems to do it, but we tried but to mimic. What yes, so this is the important question. Yeah, uh, we said that this uh, using sufficient uh, su surface reactive element, not only sulfur oxygen also can play a role, and also looking at other alloy elements that would be more probably practical. You know, apply this technology. Yeah, but in those movie, what I showed you, and we use uh, steel with different concentration of sulfur. Yeah. Thank you. It's 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 a shortcut. Uh, <laughs> Lucas, go ahead. Uh, hi, Hung. Uh, this is Prakash. Uh, I hope you remember when I met you once in uh, Leicester. I worked with Peter uh, uh, X-ray imaging. 
Um, uh, it's a very good talk. Um, I have one quick question about the uh, experimental setup you used uh, in situ uh, arc welding as well as taking radiographs. So uh, what is the sample thickness through which the X-rays passed in your radiography setup? Right, a sample thickness is about uh, the, the, the time meter of sample is 10 millimeters. Yeah, but but yeah. when you are doing the welding, um, it is placed on something or uh, up to what thickness the welding was carried out. Right. OK, so we uh, what we we are sh should you is a kind of sport welding, right? Uh, you may have a say 10 in di uh, diameters in this kind of it's it's a bar sitting in there. And then well, actually you, you if you use a thick welding and you met the proper lawfully met, it will met probably eight millimeters probably you have a couple of millimeters to contain the liquid inside yes yeah so 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 the bottom is still the solid so there is only bottom. a tiny bit of area yeah, yeah. we see on the copper plate yeah if you really want to uh, we have quite an interesting one this is small word we also do the translate kind of a wedding that's the more practical look into additive manufacturing process but difficult is we uh, it's so difficult to analyze the data we still have from the home and terabytes data, we have not touched it yet. And then we, we worked in the group in the uh, looking to in TU Deerford. They said they're one leading group in this kind of a CFD modeling of, uh, of the flu. And then when we present this to them, this is too complicated. Uh, uh, but if you any of you are interested, you know, I'm quite happy to share this data with you and to look how to analyze that. That will be more important looking to actually a uh, 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 arc welding process looking to look into welding for for automobile a lot of sport welding is not very popular popular method anyway yeah okay thank yeah. you thank you Trans translation of the plane uh that was very interesting i'm very, very happy if anyone have interest in doing this I'm, I'm still happy to share those data with you yeah thanks and anyone oh great go ahead yes i want to take the opportunity to ask a question as well. I, I find it really interesting to see the macroscopic flow and I think it's it's um, really quite fascinating because as you say it's the first time you can really get a feel for what's going on within a world pool and I was wondering about the coupling between the macroscopic flow and the microstructural modelling where you've got your um, transition points and how easy it is to couple those two things together uh, and particularly how it then might influence the proportion of uh, columnar growth to then the equiact growth. And one of the reasons I asked the question is really whether we can do anything to modify that to give us better properties. For example, using electromagnetic stirring um, during the solidification part for welding, because that's certainly something that we used in continuous casting. Mm. OK, and that's a very challenging question, <laughs> OK? Uh, because some say I cannot do it right now, but we, we, we think about it this way. But currently, those uh, uh, flow modeling is at a kind of a little bit larger scale, look at the uh, probably micrometer scale. Uh, 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 many are still experimental methods, and we have sim very simplified 2D CFD modeling to 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 mimic or to to try to mimic what happened inside the flow, but in solidification modeling, currently it's purely a solute-driven process. Uh, but we think the flow will definitely play a role. Uh, uh, I think our assumption made in our simulation, we say we said <coughs> server profile probably is pretty straightforward, and flow uh, uh, is something we want to introduce into it, but we. Uh, in the end, we just simplified into diffusion control of flow. Uh, we have not uh, introduced convection into it. And the argument is a, a convection will affect macro scale phenomena. Uh, 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 those diffusion layers always exist. As you said, you, uh, if you look at diffusion profile, you introduce electro electromagnetic storing, and then you will cut the tail of this, if you, uh, this solid so solid decay, uh, the curve, you will cut the tear of it, but you probably won't be able to cut, uh, get into the uh, uh, inference on this at the interface. But the at the interface uh, is controlled by some dynamics. And we still believe our wedding process, uh, wedding process, uh, the certification is controlled still by the, we get a thermodynamic equilibrium states. 
Right. So there are uh, there are areas we need to look, look into it. First of all, look to someone who is very good at CFD modeling uh, to help us. Uh, uh, my background in my certification modeling, look into more on theoretic type of solve the diffusion type things. And if we can you know, have someone which is good at 3D uh, uh, micrometer kind of flow uh, phenomena, and then we can work together to implug our certification structure into it. I can move the interface uh, or someone to help me to solve the flow and essentially see how this kind of connection to interference interact with kind of solid diffusion and very close to the to the to the interface looking to probably less than 50 micrometer scale. Okay. Well, this is something we're it is very interesting. I know that there's been quite a bit of work that's been done for continuous casting, which is closer to what, what I understand a bit more. And um, mm. in terms of the flow modelling, I think it's something that Mike Lowinger, who unfortunately wasn't able to join the talk today, he's done a little bit of the mm. uh, macro modelling for flow and how it influences dendritic growth directions, for example. So mm. here, perhaps we could um, remember to flag up to Michael yeah. to, to watch through and may, maybe it'd be something that Michael would like to um, yeah, to sure. you about further, Hong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward to it. Yeah, Good. it's something I cannot do it myself, but I'd like to work with someone else too. You know. Super. Uh, Thank you very the much. Interaction, the interaction between the connection flow and the diffusion layer ahead of certification run will be a very good topic and this affects many other things look into now we look into uh, actually working with Roslo look into with uh, orientation control uh, look into uh, 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 other defects or micro you, you said uh, a continuous casting process uh, definitely the, how to link this kind of micro segregation with micro segregation definitely they are linked but we do not have a very clear or accurate way to describe them yet yeah mm. Joseph please go ahead Joseph hi uh, thank you thank you for your good talk uh, I have a simple question is um, uh, your you demonstrate the software can control the depth of the pool, uh, the software content. So, and the other elements can achieve the similar uh, effect. Or, what's the what elements actually use in industry practice to control the depth of the pool in terms of Marangoni flow? Mm. I think industry wide probably software is one of the most. Uh, 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 practical elements, surface, uh, surface, surface active elements, to it. other elements such as oxygen also has a strong uh, 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 control of it. And the, since we're really looking into it, we can look at other alloying elements we can use. This is something we're searching for it, uh, but I do not have answer yet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Good. Arnon, please. Anand? Anand, you are on mute. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, so okay now. Yeah. Thanks for the beautiful talk. I, I have a very basic question about the fluid flow. You calculate the average velocity of the fluid particles and the maximum velocity of fluid, fluid particles. Have you uh, calculated the effect of welding process parameters on the fluid velocity, like uh, welding speed or the net heat input to the workpiece? Mm. But in those experiments, and then we just uh, calculate what we observed. So uh, it's spot welding, and then uh, uh, it's pretty quick. Uh, each experiment probably takes about a few minutes time. Uh, but we did not look into uh, you know, processing uh, wise to uh, affect the flow. Uh, but this since could, could be looking into it, and we still have this week of rig available. And if you uh, want to use it, we can work together to do further experiments on this one. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Is there any more question from anyone? I think we are exactly on the time actually, <laughs> too. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Professor, once again. I have one question. Yes, can I post the email? <laughs> so thank